This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Say, Ruchem Avam to the Kolel Eger de Perka. As we uh, are moving f- further into the next, uh, the next realm of the Chorben. So, uh, besides being in the three weeks, we're ready to begin uh, the nine days. Let's speak a little bit about Inyone Chorben. The Gemara says in Masech the Saita, Be'ik voice Mashicha. During the period before the coming of Mashiach, chutzpah yaske. Brazenness, chutzpah will pro- proliferate. Right? Everybody knows what that means. V'yoykir yamir. The prices will rise. Inflation. Hagefen titein peria. V'hayayin v'yoykir. There will be a lot of produce, but it will still be expensive. Umalchus tehafech laminos. The government. All the governments. Not just the governments of the the uh, Chutzlaret, the Malchus, will be turned to Apikarsus. The Eintoy Chachas, no one could rebuke them. Bezvad Yeliznus, the houses where Chachamim gathered will become other kinds of houses. And the Mishnah Mesech Saita goes on to say all of the terrible uh, symptoms, the catastrophic symptoms of of the period, the epic period of Ikvas of the Meshicha, Chach Masoy from Tisrach, people who despise the wisdom of the Chachamim, the Yirei Chait Yimasu, those who fear sin will be despised, the Hayames Tehinaderes, truth will be lacking. And the Mishnah says, Pnei Hadar Pnei Achkelev, the face of the generation will be like the face of a dog, the leaders will be Pnei Achkelev. Haben eno misbayesh meyaviv. Even a kid will not be embarrassed from his own father. The Mishnah lists about twenty disastrous symptoms of ikvasa the Mashiach, to which the Mishnah ends off v'yama yesh lanu lihishayin. With all of these terrible, ca- catastrophic symptoms, what can we rely on? We have no zechusim. Al avinu shavashamayim. The only thing we can rely on is the rebbeinu shalom. Comes along, Rav Mordechai Gifter, Zechatzak the Rosh or Shiva of Tells, and Rabbi Isai, Those who are familiar with Jewish history know that there are different eras uh, in history. You have, of course, the Tanoim, Amoraim, Goinim, Rishonim, Achroinim. But perhaps there's another period of time that we could sort of make another era out of. And if we could say, if we could label the last hundred years. I think it's pretty safe to say, the last 100 years, if we would have to categorize it, it would be called the period of the Rashi Yeshiva. You know, the Gedolei Yeshua over the last 100 years, if you had to give it a name, give it a title, where in Europe perhaps the Rabbanim were the, uh, the undisputed leaders, today it's different. Today it's the Rashi Yeshiva. So, Rav Mordechai Gifter asked the following question. Very something very odd about this Mishnah. The Mishnah tells us about all the terrible things. It tells about chutzpah, the prices, the chachomim, the yerechet, there's no emes, there's nus, p'nei adar, p'nei akelev. And then what? Like the Mishnah is ending off on a happy note? Why would the Mishnah end off on a happy note? Isn't that odd? We're trying to say how terrible things are going to be. You would think the Mishnah end off with a real, you know... Wrench in the solar plexus. You know, you think the Mishnah to end off with a real bang. And we said, don't worry, just rely on Hashem. That's a little bit anticlimactic. You know, don't you think? If the Mishnah is trying to give us a little scare, give us a little pachad, so end off on a bad note. Why, why is the Mishnah ending off? This is not the, the, we're, we're trying to tell us how bad things are going to be. Okay, a very interesting question. Very interesting question. So you're thinking, like, what kind of question is that? We always end off on a good note. Well, actually, if you look in the Mesech the Saita, Mesech the Saita ends off afterwards. Why? After this, it brings the Brice of Pinchas ben Yoyer about Zahiros, brings to Zrizos, Zrizos brings to Nikios. It already ends off with a good note after this. So that shows that this last statement is not a good thing, but it's a bad thing. And the question is, what's so bad? Isn't it a good thing? Okay, another question. We know in the nine days, the minog is, you don't eat meat. Now, Medina the Gemara, you're allowed to eat meat on the nine days. You're even allowed to eat meat, Arab Tishabah. 
Tish, Erev Tishlov in the morning, you could have, put salami in your eggs. Yeah? Erev Tishlov for lunch, you could eat meat. It's only Yisuda Masekes. But Minog Yisrael is, you don't eat meat in the nine days, to the point where the Archa Shulchan says, someone who eats meat in the nine days is over an Isra Dai Raisa, Archa Shulchan says. Isra Dai Raisa? Not even an Isra Dai Rabbana. So says Archa Shulchan, it's a Minog Yisrael that Klai Yisrael was Makabal upon themselves like a Neder, and therefore has the status of a Dai Raisa. Fine. But then there's this thing that people do. They make a siyam. Right? So what do they do? They've been preparing the whole year. Right? So somehow conveniently finish. Right? Oh, the, 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 the Gemara. Exactly. Oh, how it worked out so beautifully that they just happened to finish the Masechda during the nine days. I mean, th- is this a, this is a good thing to do? It's like, it's like a Mizonos roll. Right? right? Everybody knows there's no such thing, by the way, there's no such thing as a Mizonos roll. It's the biggest misconception. It's a fake. You can't make a Mizonos on any roll. Right? But we don't, we don't do these kind of things. The Gemara says that somebody who tries to bring in their meister through the, the window, out the window, it's not, it's not the right thing. We don't look for these loopholes. We don't look for loopholes. And yet by the Siyam, it's like a sanctioned loophole. What, what, what's the pshat in the siyam? Here we have a minog Yisrael. We're trying to commemorate. We're trying to commemorate Chorben. We're trying to preserve Avelas. So why would we allow? What's the lumdus of how a siyam works? A siyam is a simcha. So there should be a halacha that you shouldn't make a siyam in the nine days. Why would be? Why would be allowed to make a siyam? And, and it's, I heard a story. I heard from the old man a story that um, you know there's a hotel in the Catskills, Zucker's Hotel. That a lot of Gedolim used to go to, including Rav Moshe Feinstein and Rav Schneir Cutler, and many Gedolim used to go there. And during the nine days, Rav Moshe was makbed that every single day of the nine days he made a scene. Every day. And, and, one time, so you know, you can imagine, where, does everyone get to feel comfortable eating at the scene? Rav Schneir Cutler was there, he was sort of off to the side, thinking, look, I didn't learn, it's nine days, so, so he wasn't really eating. The Moshe went over to him, you're mechayiv to eat. You're allowed to eat. I'm not mechayiv to eat. You're mechayiv to eat. You know why? Because these yadin, they're eating meat. They're not going to be able to enjoy the meat. They're going to feel a little guilty. They see you on the side. You're not being soymich on the siyam. They may not eat with, uh, with enough geshmak. So therefore you're mechayiv to eat. But what's the, it's a very strange Indian. We're usually not for loopholes. Usually this is a... Uh, like the easy way out. So what's the law, what's the understanding? What's the meaning of a, a siyam during the nine days? Okay. Says the Gemara in Yuma, Dav Tesem and Aleph. Why was the first base of Mikdash destroyed? Mikdash Rishon, Mibnei Macharav, Mibnei Gimel Dvarim Shahayubai. During the first base of Mikdash, bad news. Not good. Avoid Zara, idolatry. Gili Arayos, immorality. Shri Chazam, murder. By the way, these are bad things, right? Avod Zara, Gili Arayas, these are all bad things. They did the big three, the cardinal three. And yet, if you look in the Navi, that's what the Gemara says. And if you look in the Navi, you see a completely different story. The Gemara says, Who's the man who understands this? That God speaks to Viagida. Please speak. Let... Who, any man, anyone here have a little seichel? Could somebody please tell me? of the Haaretz. Why is Eretz Yisrael being destroyed? Nitzah Midbar. Dried out like a desert. Mebli Oivar. Nobody's passing by. The Novi's asking. Chachamim! Any Chachamim over here? Could someone tell me? Why is Eretz Yisrael being destroyed? The Gemara says, Any Nevi'im? Could someone please tell me? How about Malachi Hashem? Malachim? Michael? Gabriel? You want to say? Do you see anything wrong with these people? And the Malachim looking down, they're flapping, they say, no, these guys are good guys. Shachris. Shachris, they come 10 minutes early. They put on the tefillin. They say the, everything. They don't talk by davening. They learn afterwards. They deal business honestly. They're, they eat the They're careful in Lashon The Malachim say, Mamish Sadikim Gemurim. So Rebbe Hashem says, I'll tell you, none of you know, the Chachamim don't know, the Nevi'im don't know, the Malachi Ashurs they know, Vayim Hashem. al ozvam es Tairasi, you know why? They're being destroyed. Because they're not learning. Asher nasati lufneim. V'loi shama b'kaili, they don't listen to me. V'loi hachoba. So a few questions over here. What do you mean? 
the Chachamim didn't know, the Nevi'im didn't know, the Malachim didn't know, the Gemara just said, Shvichas Damim. Right? You know what Shvichas Damim is? You take a gun, you put the bullet in, you pull on the revolver, and you shoot someone. The Malachim don't see that, they didn't hear the bullet go off. The Nevi'im didn't know, Baruch HaKodesh. Avoy the Zara. You take out the Buddha, the guy with the eight arms, and you get down and you bow down to him. What? what? They didn't see that? Uh, Gile Arayos. They didn't know? So w- what exactly, the Nevi's asking, does anybody know? And no one knew. Nobody knew. Why not? These are the most obvious things in the world. And why is Hashem saying? Because they didn't learn. The Gemara doesn't say that. The Gemara says, Avoy the Zara, Gile Arayos, Shri Chazdamim. So the Gemara gives one Maisa, and the Navi gives a different story. The Gemara says the big three. The Navi says they weren't learning. In fact, you look in the Yushami. The Yushami is Saisu the Babli. The Babli says, Avodah Zara, Gili Arayas, Shri Chazdamim. The Yushami says, like the Navi, Viter HaKadosh Baruch Hu God was Mavater on Avodah Zara. God was Mavater on Gili Arayas. God was Mavater on Shri Chazdamim. But not Al Bittul Tara. So the Yushami is upholding the Navi. So he asked the Bavli, Bavli, why was Yushalayim destroyed? Bavli would say the big three. He asked the Navi, the Navi said, what big three? They were Tzadikim, there was no Avodah Zara, there was no Gilei Arayas, there was no Shvichas Damim. They weren't learning enough. So this is a big problem. The Gemara gives one story, the Navi gives another story. Yeah, it doesn't bother you. Yeah, that doesn't bother you. You're okay with that? You should be, you should be jumping out of your skin. What's, what's going on? The Gemara gives one Maisa, the Navi gives another Maisa. You're breathing? This doesn't bother you? The, the Gemara sucks for the Navi. Yeah, so the Alshech says, Rav Moshe Alshech, Moshe Alshech, he lived from 1508 to 1593. The Arizal gives the Alshech a very big compliment. Arizal says, you know, if you want to compliment the rabbi, good drasha, captivating, interesting, challenging, the, be- the best compliment is, you're saying the truth. It's true, right? The Arizal says about the Alshech, the Kivain Elo Emes, the Drasha Yisaf. The Alshech got it right. That's a big compliment. He got it right. In fact, the Chidah writes about the Alshech, that the Alshech was Mashamesh, the Beis Yosef, until his last day, to the point where even though the Beis Yosef had sapped of all of his energy, he couldn't sign his name anymore. The al was there on the last day of the Beis Yosef, he signed the Beis Yosef's name for him. Says the al how do we reconcile this? The Navi says they weren't learning. The Gemara says, Gil Arash, Shrikh Hazdam, Zara. Says the al look in the first column over here, about the three quarters of the way down, V'ho Inyan that the Gemara says that for seven generations they were over Avodah Zara, Gilei Rai, Shri Seven generations of courts were over the big three. So if you ask the Nevi'im, why is the Beis HaMikdash being destroyed in generation eight? The Nevi'im are not going to say Avodah Zara, Gilei Rai, Shri They've been doing that for the last 400 years. If you ask the Malachim, why are they, do, why are they being destroyed? Malachim are not going to say Avodah Zara, Gilei Rai, Shri it's been going on for who knows how long. And if you ask, the, if you ask them, this has been going on forever. It can't be because of that. Why is Yvonne Hashem waking up now? Elamai, because they're not learning. No, they couldn't buy that. They didn't buy that. Because a nation wouldn't learn Torah. What's so bad with not learning? It's just Sheva al They're not actively doing anything wrong. So nobody could figure it out. The big three have been going on forever. Bittu Taira, that can't be it. Says the Ashach, let me explain to you what happened. I'll give you a mashal. There was a king, and the king had a musician. Okay, you ready for this mashal? This mashal, this is the shir. The king had a musician, yeah? And the musician would play the most beautiful music for the king. The king was enthralled with the music. He was enraptured with the music. He just loved to hear this guy play. And one day the king gets a report. They say, you know, this musician over here that you love him so much, you know what he did yesterday? He robbed a couple of stores. The king said, I didn't hear what you said. I don't care what you said. The next day they come back. He said, this guy who's playing for you, you know what he did with his hands? He murdered seven people. 
every day they speak, they tell all the terrible things about this musician. The king says, I could not care. King doesn't want to hear. Then one day they come and they tell the king, by the way, this musician, you know what he did yesterday? He bit off his fingers. Oh, he bit off his fingers! Hang him! Kill him! Get rid of our Russia! Disgusting person! Why did the king hit him? Kill him? Because he bit off his fingers? No. He couldn't play anymore. He couldn't play. So then he, 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 then he nailed him for everything else that he did. Says the Yashich. Klal Yisrael for seven generations. Avoy Dezara, Gili Arayas, Shvichas Damim, So long as they were learning Torah, God was so enthralled and enraptured by the music, taken by the music of Shira Hazos, that he ignored, he was bribed, he was bribed by the Torah. The music of the Torah was so beautiful. Hashem was Mishtashei Aboy, that he did not pay attention, he, could, he ignored, he made believe, he turned the other way, and if they weren't doing anything wrong, as soon as we bit off our fingers and we stopped learning, you're nailed for all the bad things you did. So who's right? Is the Gemara right? Or is the Navi right? The answers are both correct. Right? We were punished for the big three only when the music stopped. But as long as the music was playing, says the Al Sheikh, that Rizal said that his drushes are MS. So long God was enthralled and enraptured and taken by the music, he couldn't punish them. Rabbi, so you like the concept or you don't like the concept? Sounds good to you? You like that idea? The Torah obviously wasn't affecting them. I mean, they were still doing all the other You like this idea? The Torah was so beautiful that God was bribed by the Torah, even though they were committing the biggest averis in the world. They were killing people, but they were learning shas. Oh. May you like it? You like it? You know, they have stories, you know, on Shabbos, the Talmudim, they're learning Ketzoy Sachosh and smoking. Yeah, it's okay, as long as they're learning. You like this idea? You don't like this idea? Sounds good to you? No. Does it make you feel good? What good is learning? <laughs> Says the Shavs of Shuvah's Marit. Says the Shavs of Shuvah's Marit. Rav Yosef Matrani. Right, we did it. We had a shir Wednesday night about the Gaza. So we did a big Shuvah from the Marit. Marit was one of the greatest of the Achorinim. In fact, Rav Yonis and Ibishitz writes in the Kresi Uplesi, Sim Kof Yod, he's the greatest of all the Achorinim. Rav Yaakov Emden writes about him. Shailas Yavitz, Sim Kof Membez, God Al Ha'achorinim. Okay, you're, be- you're dealing with a big achor. Says the Shas of Marit, I heard a Chacham get up a Rabbim, and he said the following. This is the Marit in Simen Yud. As long as you learn Taira, even if you speak Lashon Hara, and you're a cheat, and you hurt people's feelings, it doesn't matter as long as you learn. And this is what this Chacham Darshan, and he brought a riot from the Zayar. The Zayar says like this: The Feirush demand the Eshtado by Raisa loy Misba Eminei Dina Klal. That anyone who learns Torah, they don't ask him any questions. And this Chacham even Darshan Barabim, what's Pshat in Amal of the Haaretz? And this Chacham gave a mashal to a musician who played music, who was a murderer, who was an adulterer, and the king couldn't care less because he played beautiful music, but as soon as the music stopped, the king killed him. He doesn't say who the Chacham was. Obviously, by now, you should know which Chacham he's referring to. No? Yeah, that's number six. He doesn't want to quote him by name. Yeah? He quotes over the words of the Yashach HaKadosh, says the Marit, Certain things that people say, we silence them. Certain things we close their mouths quickly in anger. Says the Marit, I don't care who the, this Chacham is. It's a Chilol Hashem to say such a thing. To say that as long as you learn Torah, the Yom Hashem ignores your Averos. Yes, whoever this Chacham is, he's a great man. And the Arizal may say he got everything right, but not this. He says, he says, we find, um, he says like this, look in the next paragraph. Nirabeinai, Shezeh, Hadoresh, Diber, Sora, Al Hashem, Plaster. 
whoever this Chacham is, He's speaking iniquity on God. He's making the Torah apikarsos. Don't Chazal say the purpose of Torah is tshuva masim toivim. If you're going to learn Torah, and you're going to be a rotten person, you're going to be an oivet avay you're going to do gilar ashvichas damim, your Torah is worthless, says the Marit. Go out and see when they asked Rabbi Chanina ben Tradion, when Rabbi Chanina ben Tradion asked Rabbi Yossi ben Kisma. He says, Reb Hanina says, am I going to Olam Abba? So Yosef ben Chisma says, you ever do anything good in your life? Well, wait a second. Did he ever do anything good in his life? Reb Hanina ben Tradion was a doyer. He gave shiurim every day, all day, for his entire life. Why was he asking if he's going to Olam Abba? And why is Reb Hanina ben Kisma, Reb Yosef ben Chisma asking if he ever did a mitzvah? The answer is, you can learn all day. If you don't do maisa, your learning is worthless, says the Marit. If you're not Oisek and Gemilas Chasadim, you will not be spared from Gehenna. The Marit continues. Doesn't the Gemara say in Shabbos that Rabbi Yochanan says, Ein loy la HaKadosh Baruch Hu ba'ilama yala yira shamayim? <coughs> says Marit. I, and I read it, I quote, I'll show you where I'm reading from. I'm not making this up. Right over here. Hare, She'ein Taira Chashuva Leklum. Taira does not have any value with Nei Yerushamayim compared to Yerushamayim. The other if you don't have Yerushamayim, don't learn, says the Maret. The other Abba, Mutav Shalayilma to mean by Yerushamayim. Don't, what are you learning for? You're learning, not, you're, but you're not even Abba Hazar, Gil Ashrich Hazdamim. Don't learn. Who asked you, who asked you to learn? Marit continues, second last paragraph. Halamadata Shaharve Srichin Tamid Khachamla says Dim Khajan Masim Yosim Shabnian. Not only if you're gonna learn without Maisa, are you gonna be punished? But the more you learn, the more Maisa you have to do. The more you're gonna be held accountable for your actions. So to say like the Al Sheikh, he doesn't quote the Al Sheikh by name. But he clearly quotes practically every word the Al Sheikh says. So we could pretty safely assume that that's who he's referring to. Says the Alsha, says the Marit, this mashal, that when we were serving Avodah Zara, Gilei Arai, Shvichas Damim, it was overlooked because we were singing to God and Hashem overlooked all of our Averos because he was enthralled by the music. Says Marit, God should have been nauseated by the music. He should have been disgusted by the music. The Torah of a Russia is not desirable, it's not music to God's ears. Better than he doesn't learn. And therefore he ends off that the Al Sheikh did not was not saying correct in this Indian. So obviously it's our holy duty to try to explain what the Al Sheikh HaKadosh meant. Because maybe at first glance it sits well with you that God is so enthralled by the Torah that he ignores a person's maisim. But upon further examination, I think we all understand instinctively that someone who is a, a balavera, someone who is active, so I understand, I understand if a person occasionally does an avera and he really is, you know, he's on, the, he's on the right team, he's on the right side, he's trying to do the right thing, Torah offers protection. But of a Russia, that God should ignore the Russia's maisim, what did the Al Sheikh mean? That even though we were Oivid Avadizara and we did Gilei Arayis and we did Shvi Chazdamim, the Rebbein Shalom loved our Torah so much. Why would God want the Torah of a Russia? Yeah? So I found in a Sefer, the Sefer Oyal Moshe, he quotes, Sefer Oyal Moshe was written by a, a Rav in Flappish of Moshe Scheinerman, and he quotes from Rav Shach in the Sefer Machsheves Moser, that Rav Shach said Pshat in the Alshech. So, if anybody ever came to our shurim, you know that I don't, uh, I don't sit by, uh, stand by my laurels and just accept the fact that somebody calls over Rav Shach and the Machshavas Musar. I'm going to look up the Machshavas Musar. So I looked up the Machshavas Musar, volume 1. Rav Shach doesn't say this. I looked up volume 2. Rav Shach didn't say this. It wasn't in the same Machshavas Musar. So I called up the author. I said, okay, it's a nice idea, but it's not in the Sefer. He said... I heard it with my own ears that Rav Shach said this. Okay, so 
This is based on him hearing Rav Shach say this. <laughs> Rav Shach offered the following explanation for the Alshik. And that is, let's, let's refocus our understanding. And we mentioned a few weeks ago that Klal Yisrael is considered one entity. Right? We're Chativa Achas. We're one entity. One entity. <coughs> if somebody is an Oyvid Avoy Zara, somebody is Megal Araya, Sona is Shefech Tamim, Rebbein Shem is not interested in their Torah, their Torah is not sweet to God's ears, Rebbein Shem is disgusted by it. But you have different segments in Chal Yisrael. You have some Jews who could be Oyvid Avoy Zara, Megal Araya, and Shefech Tamim. You could have some Jews who are Yoishev al HaTorah al HaVaydah and they're learning Torah. You know what the Al Shekh means? That as long as some segment in Klal Yisrael is being Oisek in Torah and they're Tzadikim, they're not Oivdei HaVaydah, they're not Balei Avera. Their learning is so sweet to the Rebbein Shalom that the Rebbein Shalom will ignore the Averas of the rest of Klal Yisrael. Chas v'shalom, if someone is a Baal Avera, if someone is a Rasha, Rebbein Hashem does not consider their learning sweet. But if you have honest, sincere, genuine people who are not Baal Avera, and they're Isaac Batayra, their learning is so sweet, God will overlook the sins of the rest of Klal Yisrael. But as soon as their learning stops, Rebbein Hashem says, I can no longer ignore the sins of the Baal Avera. That's Pshat and the Alshech. Chashra, and the same person, the learning of a Rasha is not sweet to God. The learning of Tzadikim is so sweet to God that because of that learning, Rav will even overlook the sins of the Rasha. Says Rav Shach, look at number 9. Mar and Rav Shach, Zatzal. Mevayar. Kavonas HaAlshech. Rav Shach explains the meaning of the Alshech. Sheklal Yisrael heim hamenagnim. Klal Yisrael are the musicians. God looks at the Jewish people like one entity. Even if a portion of them are not acting properly. But if you have some segments, This portion of Klai will protect that the rest of the people will not be destroyed. God says, I can't destroy Beis HaMikdash. I can't stop hearing the music. I'm so enraptured by the music. And therefore, the Navi says in the name of God, that even though they had Avodah Zorah, Hashem says, I'm a vater on that. I could overlook that. The Torah is so... Is so Beautiful, so majestic that I overlook all their sins. But as soon as the learning stops and the music stops, I can't overlook, I can't ignore anymore. To appreciate a little bit, people who dedicate their time and lives to pure limit Akhara, what it means to Klal Yisrael, what it means to the Jewish people, what it accomplishes for the Jewish people. The Reb Chaim Velazhner Chaim Velazhner was, of course, the primary disciple of only Goyen. He does not say any Maiselach. If you look through his farm, there are no Maiselach in his farm. As far as I know, this is the only story in any of the classic writings of Chaim Velazhner. And he brings a story from the Taz. Taz? He calls him Adoinenu David. Taz, one of the earliest of the Yachroinim. That a woman comes to the Taz. And she cries out to him, Adoini, my son is sick. My son is dying. The Taz says, what do you want from my life? I'm not a Rebbe. What do you want me to do? I'm not a Baumoyfus. What do you want me to do? Okay, this, is, this is Reb Chaim. Know who's recording this. This is Reb Chaim, the Lajner, quoting the Taz. The woman says, I don't, I don't want anything from you. I'm calling out to the Torah that you have. Because, Kuchabrichu v'irai sachad. So she, he says to her, good gazat. Yeah, he's saying good. This is what I'll do. I dedicate my learning to you today with my Talmidim. I give it as a gift to your child. At that moment, the kid's fever broke and he came back to life. Okay? This is not a maizalah. This is in Rav Chaim Velazhner's commentary on Perkei Says Rav Chaim Velazhner, 
If you learn Torah purely, it could bring the dead back to life. It could protect Klal Yisrael. You could have Rishoyim in Klal Yisrael, and the entire nation is spared. I'll tell you a, a Peladika story, an amazing story. Someone comes into the base Medrash, MTJ, comes running to Ramosha, says, Ramosha, Ramosha, we have to stop learning, we have to say Tehillim, because um, a young kid was just hit by a car, and he needs Rachamei Shamayim. We need to say Tehillim. Ramosha says, we're not stopping. I'm of learning. He said, Rav Moshe, your shita is that if someone's in Besakana, you stop to say Tehillim. Rav Moshe says, there's no Jew Besakana, it must be a guy. He says, Rav Moshe, how do you know? You've been sitting here. Then someone else came in. Um, they said, Rebbe, they just saw there was a yarmulke on the kid's head. There's a yarmulke on the kid's head. And Avi Tefra once told me that story also, right? There's a yarmulke on, on the kid's head. So Rav Moshe says, Look, the kid was a guy. I'm telling you, the kids ago were not stopping the learning. Sure enough, a few minutes later, they come into the base medrash. It was a guy. Yeah. What happened was the guy was a ganav. He grabbed the yarmulke off from the kid, the Jewish kid's head. He ran into the street without looking. He got hit by a car. Said They said everyone said, "Oh, Ramosha, you're a bal ruach hakodesh. How do you know?" Ramosha says, "No, no, no. I'm not a bal ruach hakodesh. But I was in the middle of learning Torah." I was trying to be masik the Shema Yitzhali with the Hilchasa. It is impossible that at the moment that I was learning anything bad to happen to Klal Yisrael in this vicinity. And therefore I knew a thousand percent the kid was a guy. And therefore I didn't want to disturb the learning. I knew it was a guy. Chazonish said that Okay, again, without any editorial comments, I'm just presenting to you the information as is. Chazonish said, as long as Rabbi Shimon Shkup was alive, Rabbi Baruch Ber was alive, the level of their, their Amelis Batayra postponed the Holocaust. It would be impossible for there to be that disaster when the Torah that they were learning was taking place. Okay? Obviously, not for any of us to comment. That's what the Chazaner said. Rabbi Chanan wants to know. Rabbi Chanan asks, right? We say, Elu Dvarim, Shadam Oichel Persem Oilam Azeb, Akan Kayem Esoilam Haba. The following things you get rewarded in Oilam Haba, you get, you know, you get side benefits in this world, right? It's like, you know, you have a job, but you get certain, you know, free perks, right? You get insurance, you get uh, free tickets, right? You, you get certain perks. What are they? Alright. Um, so the Ramam explains that why for these mitzvahs, normally we say, normally we say you don't get reward in this world. Why for these mitzvahs you get reward in, the, in this world? It says the Ramam. Because if you're good to people, you, Hashem will be good to you in this world also. So I asked Rabbi Khan an obvious question. Wait a second. The Mishnah ends off, the Talmud Torah, can I get cool? Here, I'm sitting in my Ara Amos, I'm learning my Gemara, Daf Yoimi, I'm not doing anything good for anybody. So therefore, why do I get reward in this world? I should only get reward in all of my book. If I visit someone and I bring him chocolate cake, I'm benefiting him in this world. If I invite someone, I'm benefiting in the, him in this world. If I do Gemilas Chasadim, but I'm learning Torah, who am I benefiting? Why do I get reward in this world? Says Rabbi Chanan, because every time you learn, you hold up the world, you protect Klal Yisrael, you are benefiting Klal Yisrael. And if you don't believe you're benefiting Klal Yisrael, you're not accepting a basic tenet of Judaism that Talmud Torah protects the world, protects the Jewish people. So therefore, uh, very interesting that at the Chanukah Sabayis of Yeshiva's Kol Torah, they invited Rav Shlomo Zalman Orbach to give a major address. And Rav Shlomo Zalman said the following. What number? I mean, number 17. Rav Shlomo Zalman said that when the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, the Chachamim were masakin, that you cannot build houses 
completely plastered and decorated like kings built, but you're supposed to leave off an ama al ama open. Right? It's halach. When you build a house, you should leave over an uh, area ama al ama undecorated. Zechel kacharben. Zak the prima gadim. That's only in your house. But in a Beis HaKnesses, Beis HaMedrash, you can make it beautiful, you could plaster it, you could paint it, you don't have to make any Zeichel Echorben. Says of Shom Azam and Orbach, why not? Ha! Says of Shom Azam and Orbach, because there's one thing in this world that's untouchable, that can never be destroyed, that was never Kharav, that there's no destruction, that when you have this, there's Chayim, there's Bracha, there's Binyan, and there's no Chorban, and that is, in a Makayim, Taira, there's no Chorban. Wherever there's Taira, there's no, nothing was ever destroyed. That's, like we say, the Ein Shir Rak HaTaira Azais. We may not have a base HaMikdash, but there is some element there's something that has been preserved in its pristine form that was never touched, was never tampered with. There is no chorbin, there is no destruction, and that is Tyra. Tyra has such life-giving powers. Tyra still is a source of life and a source of bracha v'klai, so the way it always was, that in a shul or in a base matters where you're learning Tyra, there's no chorbin, you don't make a zeicher l'chorbin. The base hamikdash, where we're learning Tyra, base hamikdash is standing right there. Ha. Huh. That's what Rav Shlomo Zalman said. Says Rav Lazar Gordon, tells the Rosh Hashiva, tells the Rav. When you're making a siyum, the pshat is not, well, these are days of Avelos. So I'll make a siyum, and I'll make a simcha, and we'll push off Avelos. It's not pushing off Avelos. When you're Messiah or Masechta, that aspect, there's no korban, it was never destroyed. There's no, there's no destruction. There's no korban to begin with. It's not that the simcha of Taira pushes away the korban. It's when you have Taira, there's no korban there. That was never destroyed. That's a remnant, that's a relic of Beis HaMidrash, Beis HaMikdash, that was never tampered with, that was never destroyed. Rabbi said, today, that today is the day of the Rashi Yeshiva. Right? So far we quoted from Rav Moshe Feinstein, Rav Shach, Rav Shimon Shkop, Rav Baruch Ber. Rabbi Elchanan Wasserman, Rabbi Shalom Azam and Orbach, Rabbi Lazer Gordon, Rabbi Mordechai Gifter, we hit a lot of the big Rashi Yeshiva. Yeah? This is a, and this is certainly a hashkafa that was given to Kal Yisrael by these great Rashi Yeshiva. The primacy of Limad Atayra. The blessing of Limad Atayra. Says of Shalom Azalman, in a shul you do not have Zechel Amikdash. You know why? Because when there's Limad Atayra, there's no Chorben. When you make a siyam on a masechta, it doesn't push off the chorben. There is no chorben. Oh, you ready for this one? Brace yourselves. Brace yourselves. Because after I saw of Gifter says this, I saw of Achana and Vasserman says the same thing. The Mishnah in Saita says, and this is frightening. This is downright frightening. The Mishnah in Saita says, you know how bad it's going to be in the time before Mashiach? There's going to be chutzpah. The prices will rise. The malchus will turn to heresy. The God-fearing people will be despised. There'll be no truth. The leaders... And you know what the biggest tragedy will be of all? We'll get together at these big asifas and these big atzeres tefillah and we're going to say, we have no one to rely on but God. It's not true. We have what to rely on. Limud atayra. The biggest tragedy is going to be that in 2014 we're going to have these big events and everyone's going to get up to the podium and say, we have no one to rely on but God. It's not true. That's the biggest tragedy of all. When you lift up your hands and say, That's a bizayah in Atayra. That's a disgrace to the Tyra. The biggest tragedy in the world is when we say, what are we going to do? What are we going to rely on? What do you mean what are we going to do? What we always do. Liman Atayra. That's the blessing, that's the source of Makar Chayim. Ayrech Yomim Biyamina, Usmail Ayshra Vakavad. You believe in that or you don't believe in that? Do you believe the Torah gives life? Well, if you believe the Torah gives life, don't fold your hands and say, I don't know, what are we going to do? We can only rely on God now. Amunah Bitachain. What do you mean Amunah Bitachain? Do what the Jewish people always do. Where do they get their life from? Where do they get success from? The biggest tragedy of all is when you fold your hands and you say, 
Ein lanu ami lishoin ela avinu shema shamayim. Says Rav Gifter. Says Rav Chanan Batzerman. That's frightening. I mean, we could never read the Mishnah like that. That the Mishnah is telling you the tragedy. The tragedy is ein lanu ami lishoin. We would think we're ending off on a good note. That the only thing we could do is we have no zechusim. What do you mean you have no zechusim? There's no Masechta Megillah. There's no Masechta Tainus. There's no Masechta Shabbos. There's no way to get Chayim. It's a disgrace to the Torah. The, of all the things, of all the tragedies of Ikshas the Mashiach, the biggest one of all is Ein Lanu Lehishayin El Avinu Shema Shemayim. Tell you a little story. I'll tell you a little story. And this story is, uh, again, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't tell stories. I'm not, uh, people like to hear stories. I, I heard from one of my rabbim, one of, uh, I heard from a big god, most stories probably are not true even. But again, that's stories. If Chaim Belajna writes it, you can take it to the bank, yeah? The Ramchal also. No, he wasn't a storyteller. He wasn't spinning Maislach. Ramchal brings down a story that happened in the year 1648 with Rav Shamshin Ashtapalyer. Then 1648-1649, there were terrible Gzeros and Klal Yisrael. And Rabbi, I want to tell you something. Yeah. Even though the Gemara says that Bayis Rishon was what? Bayis Rishon was Gila Rashi, and the Navi says, Asher Ozwa Satoira. Bayis Nisin Aschinam. But the Gemara says they were Oisik Batoira. But many Achorinim, including the Ramchal, tells us that all Jewish tragedy is because of slackening off in Liman Torah. That's the source of all tragedy. In fact, we once said Pshat, the end of Masech Tamakos. The end of Masech Tamakos. We know by the Beis HaMikdash HaRishon, when they davened, when the Anche Knesset Doyle davened, to abolish the Yitzhahara of Avodah Zara, they saw like a lion emanating from the Beis HaMikdash. By Bayasheni, remember when Rabbi Akiva was walking by with the Chachamim? What did Rabbi Akiva see coming out of the Beis HaMikdash? A shua, a fax. So the Archaner says a pshat. Archaner says that the same way the Anche Knesset saw a lion emanating from Bayis Rishon, Rabbi Akiva saw a fax emanating from Bayasheni. Why? Because by Bayish Rishon, by Bayish Rishon, what was the uh, what was the Yitzhahara that destroyed Bayish Rishon? The big mighty lion, Avoid the Zara, the desire for Avoid the Zara. Ultimately, they saw the lion emanating from Bayish Rishon, which showed that's what's going to take this house down. Rabbi Akiva sees the fox emanating from Bayish Why the fox? <laughs> Says Archaner. Because the fox is not this big, mighty animal. The fox is very sly, very clever, to show that what's going to take down Bayashani? A very clever Yitzhahara. The Yitzhahara that says, yeah, you stand on your principles. Fight with this guy. You fight with him. Hate him. L'shem Shamayim. Right? Sinas Chinam. Sinas Chinam is a very sinister type of Avera. That was the fox coming out of Bayashani. A fox is very clever, very sly. Right? That's why Rabbi Kiva saw what's going to take down Bayashani? The, the persuasions, the seduction of the fox. Could be you could say another pshat. Because Rabbi Akiva once had an experience with a fox. Uh, Rabbi Akiva once was asked, Rabbi, why are you teaching Torah? You're endangering your life. Rabbi Akiva says, let me give you a mashal. It's like a fox and a, walking by the riverside and the fox says to the fish, why don't you come? You know, in the river you're in danger. The fisherman could catch you. Why don't you come walk with me on the dry land? So the fish said, the fish said, Madach, where, I'm, where my source of life, I'm in danger. On the dry land where I am sure to die, certainly. What do you see from that Gemara? What argument does the fox represent? The fox represents the argument of the Tiltaira. The fox was telling the fish, come live, leave the water. That's the argument of Bittal Torah. Says the Chassam Soifer, the fox that came out of the Bayashani, that represented that all Jewish tragedy ultimately comes back to the argument of the fox slackening off in Torah. So in the year 1648-1649, 
there were terrible gezeros, gezeros of tach v'tat, and they wanted to know why is this happening. And one of the gedolei Yisrael, one of the great mekubalim, Rav Shamshin Me'ashtapolyer, by the way, Rav Nassim Hanover writes about him, that he had a malach who came to learn with him. Rav Shamshin wrote a commentary on the Zoya, Apile Arizal. And, Rav Shamshin Me'ashtapolyer got a hold of the Sitra Achra. Now, I don't recommend you do this at home. I don't recommend you corner the Sitra Achra. And Rav Shamshin Me'ashtapolyer made the Sitra Achra take a shvua. He said, Tell me why this is happening! Why are we being tormented more than any other nation? Said the Sitra Achra. I'll make a deal with you. Stop keeping Shabbos. Stop doing Mila. Stop learning Torah. And I will stop murdering the Jewish people. Says of Sham Shemir HaShapoyer. Other things we could give up. We will never give up one word of Torah. Says the Ramcha, what do we see from here? That the main antidote to the Sitra Achra, the main antidote to the Yetzirah is Torah, and the main source of life, the main source of blessing for Klal Yisrael is Liman HaTorah. Says Ramcha, Bihinei Tira, Shechurban Beis Kadshenu V'Sifartenu V'Shegalinu Me'artzenu The Churban, the Galos Haya Ba'avoin Bitol Torah. Now it's very, it's very interesting. What do you mean? That was first based on Mikdash. That wasn't the second based on Mikdash. Apparently the Ramchal understands that all tragedy, second based on Mikdash was only a temporary reprieve. But we're still reeling today from for the Chorben Ma'is Rishon. He says, Kol HaKash, HaKash, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, HaAmo Yisrael, Hu Bishvel HaToyra. All the anger of Rebun Shem to Klai is because of the Torah. We don't see such a thing. We say, come on. We don't have a strong enough army. We don't have enough defense. We don't have enough anti... No, no. It's because we have physical eyes. We don't see the root of the matter. Says Ramchal. If you could see the Shoresh Ha'inyan, if you could see the Echos Ha'inyan, you would know that all Tsar stems from slackening off in Limit Atayra. That's the story as reported by the Ramchal. Rav Isser Zaman Meltzer, Zechitzak Levracha, said over... That this story has a sequel. And Rav Yisra Zalman Meltzer, as reported in the Sefer Oyal Moshe, says the following sequel to the story. After this conversation between Rav Shav Shemei Ashtapalyar and the Sitra Achra, Rav Shav Shemei Ashtapalyar made a Sheilas Chaloim. Also, I'm not recommended to do at home. It's a certain way of communicating via a dream. And he asked, what should we do to stop the decrees? What should we do to stop the decrees? So he got the following response, that if the two G'day Hadar agree to be Moisir Nefesh Al-Kiddush Hashem, the decrees will stop. Like the Pasuk says, that Misa Sadikim is Mechaperas, that Achrei Mois comes after, right? When do you have Kapara? Achrei Mois Shnei Bnei so who was the God of Adar at the time? The Shav Shem And who was the other one? The Shach. Rav Shav Shem calls the Shach. He says, we have to meet. He tells the Shach, Shach, you're the other God of Adar. I need you to agree that we will both return our souls to Shamayim so the decrees will stop. He says, I need to think about it. Give me a couple days. He comes back after a couple days. The Shach says, I'm in, but give me three months. I'm in, but give me three months. Rav Shamshin said, well, what do you need three months? Meanwhile, every day, thousands of Jews are being killed. Says, Rav, says the Shach, very frightening thing. Says the Shach, I'm in the writing the Shach on Torah. Now, excuse me, the Shach on Shulchan Aruch, on Yeridea. In three months, I'll be done. I need to save Klal Yisrael, but even more than that, Klal Yisrael needs the halach of sukkah of the shach. I cannot, I'm not ready to give in my life. Give me another three, three months, and then I'm ready. Says Rav Yisrael Meltzer, three months passed. The shach completed the shach on Yeridea. And Rav Shashim Shapalyer and the shach both returned their souls, and the gzero stopped. Says Rav Yisrael Meltzer, 
you have to say that as important as it was to save Jewish lives, the Shachal Torah was a Chelek and Torah that all of Klai Yisrael needed for their protection and their existence until Adi Moisam Mashiach. It was more important for the Shach to complete the writing of the Shach. This is a story as we pour in the Sefer Oyal Moshe. I even heard that there are some Hasidim today who stem from a certain Gadol who will not marry into the family of the Shach because the Shach delayed three months. But then I have a friend who asked me, but wait a second, historically this story is a little bit questionable. The Shach did not die at the same time as Rosh Hashanah and It didn't happen that way. So I have a friend in Eretz Yisrael, Chashev Tamil Chacham, Rabbi Yitzchak Yeager, who said he met, he's a Chashev Mechaber Svarim, he wrote all the Svarim guidelines. So he told me he met a descendant of the Shach who have a different version of the story. I saw it over the story a couple of times before. You have a different... That not only did the Shach say, give me three months, the Shach said, no, I will not return my life. The Shach refused. He was not in it. Shach went again. But Rabbi Yisai, this is a very fundamental concept. The concept is, like the al says, the al doesn't mean that the learning of Klal Yisrael, the learning of a Russia sweet Hashem, it's the learning of genuine Tamid Chachamim, Tzadikim, and righteous individuals. It's so sweet to Hashem that that is literally what could stall off Gezerois. Rav Hanan says, the greatest tragedy is at the top it all off, the cherry on top of all the Tzaras of Yisrael, is when we cry out, Ain lanu li What do you mean we have nothing to rely on? We have what to rely on. The Yibbon Shalom continues to give us Adayim, the Makara Chayim, the Makara Abrochas, and for Zoycha to embrace it properly. Then that will be Zchus to rectify Al Ozva as Tairasi, should be Zchus to rebuild the base Hamikdash, and we should all be Zoycha, Erech Yomim, be Mina, Smaila Oisha, Vachava, Hashem Oiza, Moyitain, Shem Yibar Chasam, and Vashalam. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.